1963, and it isn't long until you'll hear regional voices on the news, but for now, we're stuck with this rather suave Pathé voice. But in the meantime, you can now drive along the newly opened sections of the M4 and the M6 motorways to visit the newly opened Love Flu and the Royal Mile in your new Ford Anglia. Seriously, is this what 1963 had going for it? Oh, how do I do regional accents, man? Oh yeah, you guys, welcome to 1963 and welcome to the second theme park revolution. Yep, that's right, that exists. Theme parks went through a number of notable revolutions to make them what we know and love today. So the first came just after the war, that turned them into ride-based amusement parks. And then the second came about because Disney really started to push the boundaries. They started an arms race. We're now at the point where the rides are about to become way more sophisticated and theming them is going to become the norm. So we're on the eve of the introduction of some of the most well-loved attractions that we have in the world and right now we've got the first tube of steel coaster going up and we've got this the log flume and we're going to call this the world's first even though six flags over texas will probably want their title back but hey shh, don't tell them <laughs> <laughs> and so this is what we've got. I started down here with the uh, the main pool of water. This is like the collection pool. All good log flumes start here. Uh, and then we come to the station and we're going to come around this way. So I've had to sort of meander it around because right now in the technological world, we don't have the ability to suspend a lot of water high up in the air for the purposes of a ride. We can do it via aqueducts, aqueducts and we can do it via raised canals, etc. But not for rides. So I wanted to play with the terrain of this area because it is on the side of a hill. So we we're going to come up to the top of the lift hill and we're going to then meander our way down a gentle decline uh, into this area. And this is all the Six Flags Over Texas one does because this is all log flumes are capable of doing right now. You don't have multiple drops and you don't have all of the usual thrills and spills of a log flume until you get to the last drop because you come around the bend here. And I wanted to make this a bit of a catch point um, where if you've got any water coming over the top then it's just going to end up in the pool down here and you can save as much water as you can and then you come around this final turn and into the second lift hill and into the first and only major drop and then you come down into the splash pool and it's a man-made splash pool very man-made splash pool and this is exactly as it would be uh and we come around the final turn and then we come back into the station. So I have uh, kept some of the forest in and not kept some of the forest in just so you can get a feel for how this is going to sit. Uh, and we are going to have a theme. It is going to be Western. So I need to find a way of getting rid of the uh, playground and making this actually work as an area. I'll see you in a minute. <laughs>
Oh, hello, there's a town that's appeared. And I mean, this is very different to how I left it at the end of the first update, right? And I mean, I've got a fairly limited area to work with here. I am between the ghost train and the flying burns, and I've had to put in all of the buildings in the middle here. So I am taking some cues from Gardaland. You will not be surprised about that because their western area is exactly as I wanted it to be. And it's also long and thin, right? So it just makes absolute sense. And I've started that process by putting in the paths here. So what I've done is my usual technique of having one ramp and one stairs because it sort of widens out the area without needing to widen it out too much and then you can put stuff in the middle just to bring it to life and, and whatever so yeah that's what I've done that's what I've done here buildings wise I put three main ones in there's this one here which is actually very similar to our ice cream shack which is here sorry spike uh, <laughs> and, uh, over in this side I, i've got another building it's supposed to be the bank it will have a flat roof and stuff i just needed it to look right from peep level uh, so i've just started to kit that out with its balcony and what i think is going to be the awning and stuff it needs fine detailing this is just like a placeholder and i mean i think even at the time lapse you probably saw this taking on three or four different personalities anyway i had all sorts of different ideas but i think this is the one i'm gonna i'm gonna settle with and likewise with this building i had originally had a different shape in mind but I wanted to make something interesting and a little bit more intricate, so this is what I've gone for here. And I mean, Hydro Sunshades have come out an absolute treat in this anyway as, as the awning. So uh, yeah, I just need to kit this out properly, do a few touches up, uh, put the roof and stuff on. But it's looking, it's looking all right from whoop, it's looking all right from peak level, and that's uh, that's the thing that that really matters, right? Uh, and then we've got the actual station building. So Colorado boat is being aimed at for this one. I normally do that kind of style, but I've got to remember that it's 1963. Three. And I can't get too carried away with design and I can't get too carried away with architecture because actually stuff is still pretty primitive in terms of design. Yes, Disney is doing all sorts of lovely, wonderful stuff, but we are still pretty primitive with what we're designing. So that's what I'm going for here. Just a shed, just to put the station in. In fact, if you look at the original Six Flags Eric Texas one, that doesn't even have a building. It has the two dual stations, which I didn't realise it had two flumes, by the way. Um, but it's got the two, it's got the two stations that are dual loading, and they've just got a, a covering in the middle, and that's all that uh, that's all that you've got. So the queue line, then I've just kitted out with a couple of fences. That's now ready to have all of its path cover, and that's what this is to do with here. I haven't done the uh, the overpass yet, the walkover, because I don't really know what style I'm going to go for with the fencing. I think I probably should just need to continue the fencing or whatever actually to be honest i'm just being lazy i just don't want to do it yet <laughs> and then here i've got myself a bit of a pier so you can actually lift off some of the boats and have them waiting here i kind of saw this come to life on the six flags over texas one i'm not by the way i'm purposely not saying the name of it because i have ruined so many takes trying to say the name so um alessandro let's just call it alessandro that's not even remotely close but it's fine whatever so yeah so you can put all of the uh, boats and stuff along here and then in this area i have out, i have also opened it out to be a bit of a um a maintenance area i don't know if this is too big you know because uh, we've only got 10 boats on the on the the actual trough or on the circuit so one two three yeah it's probably about right but hey it is what it is it's there and it's built into the side of the hill and then i've just put the maintenance shed underneath the lift hill here cut into the side of the hill that is kind of feasible as to uh, what you would find and then you will have already spotted them yes we've got custom supports going on this definitely needed custom supporting we didn't have Steel supports in 1963. Oh, I need to put the concrete in there. Uh, we didn't have steel supports in 1963. These would have been wooden supports, and that's why you've got all of these horrific supports. Uh, I don't know, actually, if it needs... Um diagonal or horizontal or vertical no horizontal bracing i don't think it does looking at the six flags over texas one i don't think it does not here anyway but i'm toying with the idea that it might need to but i'm just going to leave it for now it's fine i mean it's not traveling at any speed it just needs to support weight from the top and not from the side so i think we're okay uh, and then i have just put the placeholder of a shed at the top here and then a second placeholder for another shed uh, here don't know what's going to be in there yet i need to i need to play that out and then talking of custom supports this one was the biggie luckily for me i was able to use the custom supports from the woody as a base and then just alter it for uh, log flume but yeah have a look at the six flags over texas one it is exactly like well it's not exactly like this i've all, i've taken a bit of creative liberty uh, but this is pretty much 
consistent to how it would be. And then in the splashdown area, what I've done here is I've actually added in one of the troughs to the back here. So this would be like a, um, a runoff trough. Uh, I don't really know where it would come from, possibly here, possibly from somewhere else on the course where it's running back down into the main lake, um, but it just needed to be there. It's something that I normally build in, but haven't uh, built in properly. And I only noticed, by the way, when I was clearing all of the foliage from here, that this is actually at ground level. Uh, where can I, can I, yeah, can you see it? It's actually at ground level. That was pure coincidence. I completely fluked that <laughs> but hey i love it when a plan comes together and then this is the final uh, the final splash down i hate that the trough is so wide i mean again six flags over texas one is, is a much narrower trough but hey it is what it is we can't change it i could i could do a custom one if i wanted to but it wouldn't look as good uh, so yeah what i've done is i've just put the um and i know that this is not finished right i know this is not complete it's just there as a placeholder so i know uh i've put the base from the, the like the stone base um from the haunted house pack and i've just lined that off to make it you know consistent with the haunted house theme that you've got going on here kind of felt like the park would have at least made an effort to try and do some kind of theming on the trough if you stood in the ghost train queue right so i love these three different sight lines you get as well so you're like sit, st sit standing here uh, and then you get into the trough and then you get into the flying turns and stuff over there love it love it love it love it uh yeah so then we've got this over here so gardaland does this on their log flume on the colorado boat it's like a cladding that sits on the outside of the trough i love it i think it's great i mean it sort of gives it that that western more westerny vibe right uh, and then on the inside what i've done is i've put loads of mulch down because this would probably be at ground level and the ground would come away at the trough um and then i've just put in the catwalk here as well so that you can walk around the outside to the maintenance area because you won't be able to get to the maintenance area from here well you could if you were so inclined and you were not so health and safety conscious you could probably hop the fence and go get through that way but hey no you go down the official <laughs> down the official pathway please uh, and then i've just started to um think about how i'm going to join it up later on and i think it's going to need to come around this way and then join to the back of the haunted house and then that's your uh, that's your access so this is where we are at the moment i mean i love how this is starting to come out i need to do all sorts of stuff now i need to do the fine details i need to do the ride system in the station uh, i need to do all of the path covers and all that stuff so see you in a minute
Alright, there we go then, guys. We've got a town and the Dunfinal stamp is coming out because the flying turns currently in the way. <laughs> but given that I had such a small space to put something so big in, I'm actually really chuffed with how this has turned out. So I'll pop in a before and after so you can see how much the area has changed. And if any of you say you preferred the playground, I'm going to come after you. This was a lot of work. But ultimately, please welcome to the park. Da, 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 da. Sawmill Falls. Sorry, guys, I had to name this one myself. Uh, well, by the way, ironically, it doesn't have a sawmill, but can we just um, maybe not go ahead and tilt Disney? That'd be great. <laughs> no, watch this space. And I mean, the flying turns days are limited, so we might see a sawmill in the future. If you look at the development and stuff with uh, Big Thunder Mountain, that shows you what the art of the possible in the 60s actually is so but at the moment the sight line here is pretty decent i must say lots of touching up on the log flume to talk about but first let's have a look at some of the buildings and this is the gift shop gunslingers i've called this one it's just a simple gift shop i don't i don't want this to be any more than this it just needed to be a simple but elegant design and when you add in all of like the westerny type stuff down here and the the terrain changes and whatever it actually looks pretty decent it's more intricate than the eye first sees and that's what i love about this about this building because it's on the it's on a side of a hill it's got all of the stuff in front of it it actually looks like it's a it's a western building uh, so inside it's just usual gift shop i mean it's a really small space to work with and that that's kind of by design so i've just kitted it out with like typical westerny type stuff american flags and all of the all the red white and blue stuff you know it's just typical midwestern uh midwestern wild west uh but yeah that's what i've done there and then we've got ourselves our food unit. This is ribs and soda, I think it is. It has no name at the moment. If you want to name it, let me know in the comments. That's fine. Um, I'll add it at some point, I imagine. Uh, I'll choose the best ones. Um, but yeah, ribs and uh, soda on there. And then we've just got the picnic area outside the front here. And then, as I just pointed out, we've got all of the theming and stuff that I started to throw down. Now, because this is a bit of a hill, and I know this is the 1960s, so health and safety hasn't quite gone mad yet, but there is still some kind of consideration for health and safety. So I have just put a really small fence. It's the actual western fence that you find just along here, just to stop people from falling down that gap, because it is a pretty big gap. Uh, and then the building down this side, I have actually now finished it uh, so I quite like how this has turned out this effect here was a complete accident it's the windows turned upside down or turned back to front and then um, the staging the, the wood platform turned up and it just gives this really cool wood effect so I like it yeah I, I like it so I finished that off and that's all done and then you notice that I, I put these in quite early actually I put the strip lights in because I just wanted this area to feel a bit mag a bit more magical and to be fair the Gardaland uh, western area does this quite effectively and uses it quite effectively so I know it works in real life and yeah, it just gives a really nice entrance. And this entrance as well, by the way, I didn't think this was going to be as good as this. I genuinely was going to struggle to build an entrance. But actually, when I put these stairs in, which have got these also awkward other stairs that have been put in. Uh, hey, go 60s. Um, and then I put the gravel in and it just created this like swoopy wave. I'm here for that. Like, this is perfect. It's going to change in the future. We're going to end up with proper pathing, but hey, it's all cool. And then at the top here, I have also put in the path covers. I probably didn't need it, to be fair, but I just had some bits of untidy stuff I wanted to tidy up. And I also didn't want this to be a straight line curb. I actually wanted it to have a bit of a swoop to it. So, hey, it works. Uh, the path covers for the win. Um, and then I've just put this, this monstrosity in. It's not animated or anything. It's not triggered. Um, it could be but it's not i can't stop it steaming so whatever we'll just deal with it <laughs> but i just thought it needed to fit there because we, if we're going for this whole sawmill falls uh, it has to be a little bit industrial right so yeah and then the, the the actual drop itself um i took the inspiration of this from the original from the six flags over texas and uh there's an advert actually out there from the 1960s that gives you a kind of a clue as to what this ride was like back then this is pretty representative and I didn't realize as well by the way um because I was reading a thing of the history of log flumes that the cedar fair no cedar point log flume opens just after the six flags over texas one I didn't realize that so actually we are in the same remit and we're in the same realms so yay go us <laughs> and then this final turnaround I've just put in some more western clutter and stuff just to bring it to life you know just to bring it to 
into this western into this western world and then the outside of the building the station building i've just tidied up again i didn't want this to be anything ridiculously elaborate i mean you could say this is the sawmill right if you wanted to it's not but you could say it is and i want what i wanted with this building is to have one closed side and one open side uh, so that's what I've done here. That's why this side is open rather than the other side. Uh, it just makes sense for this one to be it. But then inside here, more red, white and blue stuff. More uh, like mine type stuff and westerny type stuff going on in here. Just put in some of the ride uh, paraphernalia, you know, the uh, push points and stuff going on in here. So it doesn't need any more than that really. And then the fencing and stuff I did actually do. Ugh, it killed me. I left it till like as late as I possibly could, but hey. <laughs> and then the queue line here is all finished. Uh, the maintenance area here has been touched up. I had to move some of the um, some of the water towers because they just weren't in the right place. So they were interacting with supports and stuff. I still don't think they're in the right place, but hey, they are as good as they're going to get. And I actually found a reason for this trough so what I did up the top here uh, there we go is I actually put the concrete trough in that you'd normally find this collects all of the water that it doesn't go up the lift hill uh, so it actually gets pumped down these pipes here uh, and then eventually it would find its way down into this trough and I have put a concrete thing in here and it comes to the trough and it comes down here and then it returns back to the pool so it's the full cycle the full cycle of water um, to make it as realistic as I possibly can and then at the top of the lift hill we've got ourselves just this little thing i pulled it together i was going to delete it i hate it uh, i need to move it <laughs> actually i'm going to do that now uh there we go i'm going to move it to there there we go uh so yeah it supports itself it would be attached to the track and stuff so it doesn't it can't be too heavy but pff, i hate it Maybe it'll get rethemed when they come along and do it in like the 90s or whatever. But I've also just copied it down here as well because it just feels like that's the sort of thing that it would do. And then of course I did come along and I've pruned all of the trees. So uh, oh, I've done it as much as I can anyway. I, I think there's still some scraggly bits that we're just going to have to deal with. But uh, yeah, I've pruned all of the trees. They're now all in the right place. I've made sure that the clearances on all of the trees are either just okay or perfectly okay. Um, and then it comes around this way and I still I'm still impressed with the fact that this is still on uh, on actual terrain height like complete accident <laughs> I'm, just, I'm loving it and then this final drop I love how this has turned out now yes so good uh, and then I did put the don't die fencing in uh, just to stop people from going across this way and uh, themed it and stuff and I've also just corrected some of the terrain as I was moving the train around it it's reset some of it so I've just made that a thing and then I have also connected the backstage uh, ramp to the backstage of the haunted house so you can now actually get in so that's looking cool uh, don't know if this is actually wide enough you definitely wouldn't get a van or anything down there but you know whatever whatevs uh, so yes there we go this is the western town um as we as we found it like as we designed it oh by the way i you i pulled these in from uh, actually, I pulled them in from multiple places. It's both Chachalandia and Grosvenor Gardens. Um, I built them and I I rarely use them, so why not? There you go. That's the town, guys. Thank you so much for getting to the end of this episode. I really do appreciate it. Let me know what you think of this in the comments below. Um, and we'll go for a ride on the log flume. So until we speak again, please look after yourselves. Uh, have an awesome week and uh, I will see you next week. <laughs> Can you smell burning?